Uh, you're listening to Talk Sports, and uh, we're here till one o'clock this afternoon. Simon, uh, Jordan, and Paul Ince in the studio with me, Sam Adderface, today. Uh, we talked a little bit about Brentford and the situation that they find themselves in, and uh, Thomas Frank questioning the, the response of the supporters when they went 1 0 down to Chelsea. What about Chelsea? Because their supporters were incredibly upset on Saturday. Um, the Chelsea are making their feelings clear not only about the football on the field, but about the man in the dugout. For the first time, really, they turned on Maurizio Pochettino and the owners. Uh, there was quite sort of strong swear words used to Maurizio Pochettino and to Todd Bowley. Um, and Pochettino says afterwards that he wasn't worried about his relationship with the Chelsea fans. We need to accept this relationship. I told you. Uh, I think someone asked me, uh, you feel the love from the, from the fans? No. Uh, what we are going to expect. We need to build our relationship. But in between the coaching staff or the coach and the fans, uh, you build your relationship through winning games. But at the moment, the expectation, we cannot match the expectation. And if we don't match the expectation, what are you going to ask for love? Normally in football is the frustration you pay with the coach or you pay with the, you know, with the, with the people that are, are in the, above in the responsibility. I know I know ask for nothing. I'm going to continue to work and try to change this perception, you know, and change uh, winning games. Uh, we have now one week to prepare Newcastle and try to win and, yes, and, and keep moving and pushing. We, we need to manage some reality and then I cannot, you know, every single day to explain why and, of course, we are working really, really hard to try to win games. <clears throat> uh, Chelsea have only lost three of the last 11 games. One of those was the cup final. I did that for Talk Sport. And afterwards, Paul, I went into the uh, the White Horse pub, which was the designated Chelsea pub. And I was speaking to some fans in there and I said to them, how do you feel? I mean, it's quite. it was quite a bad situation to lose to Liverpool's kids. How, how do you feel about it? And, and, and the consensus of opinion that I got from the supporters that I met in that room that day was, well, if you'd told us four weeks ago that we'd give Liverpool a game we would have bitten your hand off. So, you know, it is what it, it is. And they seem quite sanguine about the situation. But this weekend, things changed. And I always think when fans start getting dug into an owner, especially away fans, there's trouble for the manager. Yeah, listen, I think... Um, listen, I'm not a football owner, so I can, could be more to tell you about that. But normally when it's the manager who's getting the stick, it's, it's, it's part of the past. It's time to say, you either get cheered or you either get booed. Um when it raises to a different level, when there's insults, and then it's a different kettle of fish. And you always find once the fans turn to the owners and start getting criticised, then it's saying to the owners, make a change. I might be completely wrong. As I said, Simon's probably more equipped to answer that question. But, <clears throat> but what I see with Chelsea is that, that it's a team, it's a young team. You know, fans have to understand you have to build. When Sir Alex Ferguson went to Man United in 85, 86, you know, it was to build a team. The first two years, he absolutely struggled. OK? 89, he won the FA Cup. But we still weren't the right team. And we think we finished 13th in, the, 13th in the league. You know, but we were building. We were adding pieces of jigsaw to the jig, pieces to the jigsaw. So do you think people are less patient now than they were? And listen, people were screaming for Fergie's head. So Alex said, hey, don't worry about that. People were saying, oh, you know, by me, bought Danny Wallace, bought Gary Pallister. We were getting absolutely castigated. You know, Fergie was getting, you know, he doesn't know what he was doing. You know, that's where you have strong owners, you know. But you didn't have the outlets that you have now to be no. able to voice your dissent. Correct. So you didn't have chat shows like this that were able to mm. highlight the, the feelings. Mm. Do you get an impression Club of... Club call? Not to the same mm. extent you've got now. You've got social mm. media, which... Yeah, yeah, social media. No, I'm just saying it's another factor. I'm also saying, do you get an impression that Todd Bowley conforms to the orthodoxy? and conforms to the way that people think that he should do things, mm. or do you think he does things the way he wants to? Well, he's taking a back seat at the moment. The person with the mm. real power in that organisation is Barley. Yeah, but, mm. but, that, but the point is, is that organisational structure, that financial structure, that ownership model, by the way, these Chelsea fans is to wind their necks in because they nearly didn't have a club a couple of years ago. So they start screaming at people that have spent money on their football club. You can club. understand the frustration. Yes, I can. I can understand mm. the frustration. And, 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 and I understand, the, you know, when you're playing against Brentford, a team that you would have a perception that you should be able to beat, even though the performances and the results over recent years don't dictate that, that you're going to be frustrated. Um, and it's right to be frustrated and it's right to be emotional and it's right to have your feelings about football because if you didn't have emotion, the, the game wouldn't survive. It so wouldn't why should they wind their neck in then? Well, I think they should wind their neck in about the reality of how they express it because on one hand, 18 months ago, two years ago, you were worrying about the future of your football club. Now you're worrying about some mistakes that are being made by the owner who's been prepared to spend a billion quid 
700 million net on trying to get the team going in the right direction. Pochettino, for me, is not your answer to win the league, but he's a decent manager and he'll do a decent job for Chelsea. If your mission is to win the league with Pochettino, I think it's a false errand. If your mission is to get yourself competitive again, then Pochettino is, will do a decent job for you. And if mm. Todd Bowley <clears> sees <throat> the same thing in Pochettino that he saw when he courted him, he courted Pochettino. So they're all this preposterous crap that Pochettino wasn't involved in the transactions of players that were bought during the summer's nonsense because Pochettino was courted. Wait, that, that, how, how do you know that? that's nonsense? Because I think it's highly unlikely when a manager's in demand and a manager's in a position of, 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 of ascendancy and in a position where you're the one that's being sought after that you won't go in there and say, I, let me finish the point, then I'll tell you why you can critique it. That ultimately, you've got no say in the transfers. So that's nonsense. Most managers that when you when you go to a manager and you want a manager, I can tell you the balance of power is in a conversation with a manager. Mm. I want you. Well, I'll come to you, but I'll tell you what I want I'll in exchange this. for that. Yeah. Right. So they're so the balance. So this idea that Pochettino isn't responsible for some of those players that have been brought in during the summer, the four hundred million that were spent during the summer, is ridiculous. But if Pochettino needs time to turn this situation, Klopp didn't win bugger all for three years. Mm -hmm. Besides losing finals that they participated in, he got time to be able to get his impressions upon it. Chelsea seems to be a more difficult one to turn around, but I would imagine that Pochettino, if Pochettino is doing the same job this time next year, then gone. But I think making a claim for him to go now because you want to hark back to what Mourinho did once upon a time, mm. it's bloody stupid. Um, mm. Pochettino, as far as I understand it, didn't have that much influence on the recruitment, and it's because of the fact that they've got um, the two sporting directors and the, a system of trying to acquire talent that has gonna, is going to fulfil its potential down the line. What you mean the, like the, the players that other clubs wanted to buy? You mean like Caicedo and you mean like, uh, like Lavia and what, other what players? What do you mean? Sorry. Well, they weren't, they weren't, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't Chelsea. It wasn't, Chelsea weren't the only ones in for these players. No. So I would imagine when you, when you say... But what I'm saying is, is that Pochettino did didn't have influence in that. I don't believe you. Well, he, I don't believe that, 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 that That's what I'm hearing. I believe that if the, if the question was framed to you... Sa as a, Simon, he doesn't even have the, 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 the fact of veto that the, the club want to put in a set-piece coach into his coaching team. So it's not beyond well, the realms of okay, possibility well, to believe see, that he I, isn't I, going to I have a say like that, on, on, his, on, on I, the players. When I hear stories like that, I wonder who's telling you and why they're telling you that sort of information and why that would be information that would be privy to a journalist and what the motivation for telling you that in the first place was. They were quite open about that in the press conference. He was talking about it. But I also look at the reality of saying, for example, did you choose Caicedo? No. So did someone, would you like Carcedo? Put aside the 100 million quid they paid for him. Would you like Carcedo in your side? Yeah, he's a good mm. player, I'll have him. That's consultation. Just because he didn't choose the player doesn't mean he's involved <clears> in the process. The point yeah. is, is that he probably would have a different squad if he was choosing it. I think he would probably argue that fact. Even that well, being the case... Well, he will now because his, his team attempt for the league Even that being the enough. case, should he be doing better with the players that he has got? And is Simon right to suggest that if you want to win the league or be competitive in this league, then he's not the man? Listen, I, I, I still think it, I think it's early doors, Pochettino. As I said, they're a young squad. You know, the remit must be to buy young, buy talented, potentially players who could take you to the next distance, next uh, to the championship. Obviously, you need experience with that. What, what I will say is, you know, let's not get down the road of Manchester United, where we've gone from Moyes to, to Van Gaal to Mourinho to Ten Hag, and we're nowhere, not even closer to being where we want to be as a mate United team. You know, they've gone from Graham Potter, now we're talking about Pochettino. You can't keep sacking managers, you know, because it's not. there has to be a project to have. Listen, some managers don't get to have a project, Simon. Mm -hmm. But you remember Arteta a few years ago when all the Arsenal fans were saying, out, out. And Gronka was like, no, we're going to have some bumpy roads. Look where they are and now. He got an FA Cup win, didn't he? Yeah, he got an and FA that, Cup win. And doors. But so think, so I, what I'm I, saying to you, it's easy to turn because you look at the money that they've spent. And Simon's right, it's not about the price tag. Cusada was a top, top player at Brighton. Got to Chelsea, not the same player. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a young team. Give him time. You can't keep sacking managers. And so Simon's right. Social media is a part. Is a part of it. I mean, part of it. Chelsea at this mm. moment in time, Brighton have an ability to turn five million pound footballers into hundred million pound Correct. footballers, and Chelsea mm. have an opportunity to turn hundred million pound footballers into five million pound footballers. <laughs> the point. The point is, is that you look at the appointments criteria. Mm. Potter was a flawed appointment for me. I always thought it was a flawed appointment. I thought we were too big for him. Tuchel, with the challenges of Tuchel's personality and his off-field activities, I think that was in part the reasons why there were challenges between him and the owner you're finding out about Tuchel at Bayern Munich so really and truly you've got to, I think you've got to judge Bowley by Pochettino and Pochettino's got to be given his head and that means he's got to be given at least 18 months mm. and if at the end if, 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 if after this transfer window summer winter January summer again if in January next year you're stinking the place out then the conversation probably needs to be had mm. yeah, listen, you listen, subscribe listen, to that? Listen, normally every manager wants two or three transfer winners, didn't they? 
I think Chelsea have got all they've got now. They need a striker. They bought in Clearly. Kuk, they bought in Kuku, but it's never uh, been. He's never, never been fit. fit. You know, I mean, he started two games. Jackson's not, not a centre forward really when he was at Villarreal. He was playing on the left hand side. That's his normal position, but can play that role. So they've never actually got a striker. You know, and, that, and that's always been a, a problem. But yeah, I think as a manager, you want your eighteen months, you want your two years, you want your two free transfer windows. And if and, and if and if it goes all wrong, then you can accept that. You know, you have to accept that. But as I say, if you start sacking Pochettino now, you're talking about Chelsea having three managers in the last two years. Three when, years. when you were uh, in charge of a football club, Simon, and you were the yeah. owner, people level, so give, you, yeah. give you stick. You, you know what it's like yeah. to get the heat. No. Did, was your, would you, did, you, did you ever no. react to it by thinking, well, I can distract by taking the, the manager no. out of the firing line? That no, could be the I answer. took managers out because they deserved to be taken out and because the only thing that was holding them up was their suits and, and me. Um, and if I felt that if, if the reasons why I'd employed them not an ill-fitting suit I not think. an ill-fitting suit if the reasons why I'd employed them um, were still evident yeah, because I was privy to more than the fans were privy to mm. uh, obviously the ultimate privy is what you see on a Saturday afternoon right? if you don't see mm. it on the pitch but there's other things going on behind the scenes that you also need to be part of and understand what's going on and a bit like the Rashford situation criticism doesn't come unless you start to fail on the pitch of course uh, of course it doesn't but also you're asking me a question about what an owner does which is to deflect away from his the, the abuse that he's getting no not necessarily if I felt that the guy had run his course then it may coincide with the fans view you know when I when I fired Peter Taylor he'd run his course it was a waste of my time he was wasting my time and, and you know and I didn't appreciate it and he was wasting his own as well so you know the bottom line was the fans and I reached a conclusion at the same time um, there were other times when the fans had a view and I didn't share that view and I didn't share that view and I didn't care and I got some of the abuse as a result of it but I didn't really care because I was making a decision because it was an informed decision that I'd mm. made or I thought I'd made Another big issue for the Chelsea supporters has been and this is something that they were talking about on social media uh, over the weekend was the lack of clear communication between those two figures though the, the, the Clear Lake Capital owners Bowley and Egg Barley mm. communicating with them do you think that they have f- missed an opportunity in selling this project to the supporter base? What, by communicating with them? Because commu- if you communicate better and you lay the groundwork and say this is going to take this long or it is going to be, Do you think they'll be a long-term by the- process, you're more likely to get buy-in uh, uh, than if you don't communicate <sighs> well, with then them. I think you're overestimating the expectation and the sense of entitlement that football fans have. And there's this, we got into this new generation of thinking that ultimately, I remember listening to the Tottenham Supporters Trust suggesting they were going to issue a list of ultimatums to Daniel Levy and listen to those twits and the Man United Supporters Trust saying you're in last chance saloon if you don't I mean, what does that mean then? what are you going to do nothing the point is is that it's a, it's a PR supporters act. have to be considered don't they and you want, you well, want them to come along well, with you otherwise you well, get how the can, scenarios how can you that suggest this that, that, that these silly sods that have spent a billion quid on players aren't considering supporters they didn't do it you know, they didn't do it because they don't want to be successful they've, they've made mistakes it's a balancing act between communicating with the fans is communication with the fans good of course it is is bringing the fans along on a journey with you good of course it is mm-hmm. but that's assuming the fans want to come on a journey with you and don't want to be destructive and don't want to have their opinion and the more you've got to get the balance right between being communicative and giving fans a sense of entitlement they can say what they bloody well want and we're at a point now where perhaps Bowley is enabled it in the, but Bowley's position in the media is he's in the idiot American who's got too much money doesn't know what he's doing that's his perception of him and that will be his perception forever now and whatever he does at Chelsea it'll be a plaid pant wearing American that suggested but like an you said game. this is a game about of perceptions you said that earlier but the, the biggest perception killer is winning football matches <laughs> And Chelsea aren't doing that at this moment in time, that is for sure. Not enough of them anyway. They've won just three of their last nine games, but um, they are 16 points away from the relegation zone, so it's not all (laughs) bad. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.